Okay, I just hit the stream button. It doesn't look like anything's happening here. Let's see if this is working. Okay. Oh, Twitter just connected, YouTube, and oh, Twitch. I don't know why Twitter's connecting. Okay, we'll turn that off. <laughs> oh, okay, hold on. For some reason, Facebook's going to take another minute here. Can you hear me? Can you speak up a little bit? Can you speak up a little bit? Okay. Hi, everyone. If you're watching recording, we're going to start here in just a minute. It looks like everything's about up and running pretty close. Okay. Hope everybody had a great weekend. I know I did. Sora took a lazy day yesterday, got up late, and decided that um, that's how the rest of the day was going to go. So pretty much lounged around yesterday and went out for ice cream, sort of. <laughs> went out looking for ice cream, but everywhere we went, it was closed. I know, so disappointing. The one time you decide to go out for ice cream and everybody's closed. And, um, but we did go out and have a little lunch and all that good stuff. So it was not all for nothing. It was fun. It was nice to get out and, um, you know, do something else. Anyway, so not only did I have a nice day off yesterday, but Saturday was really productive. I'm, I don't know, gonna share today. Um, made the most expensive ring I have yet to make. This is an engagement ring that I made for Andy's best friend. So I get to share it because she's already seen it. This is an aquamarine. Uh, I'm thinking it was about 10 carats, this aquamarine. So it's got three zeros behind it. How's that? So I'm really excited. It came out beautifully, better than I thought that I could do. And, you know, stretching my skills a little bit thinking about doing this into a class. Let me know what you think. Anyway, it's one o'clock, let's get started. Hi everyone, today is Monday, July 25th, week 119 of Going Live. I'm Q Fong Gray, I'm, I am broadcasting, simulcasting on four channels today. You can find me on Twitch TV, Q Talk on Facebook, my personal Facebook page at Q Fong Gray, and also on YouTube if you just search uh, Q Farm Gray on YouTube, you'll find the channel. If you are joining us for the first time or have only been here a couple of times, all the videos that I've been doing for 119 weeks is still up there, either on YouTube or on Facebook. If you go into any of the searches on those platforms and just search um, my name or search the project that you missed. <laughs> I'm like, how would you do that? Let me think about that. If you don't know what the project is, I don't even know how you would search it. But if you look under videos or if you look in the channel, you can scroll through and you can see all the projects that we've done. Yep, I think I crossed over 200 um, recently. If not, we're really, really close. I know that I passed 175 something like 12 weeks ago. So I'm guessing we're up about 200 at this point. But it's been fun. So one of the series that we've been doing for the last few weeks is Start Something New. Start Something New has been a series of projects that, uh, and techniques that I have never done before. And today <laughs> is another one. And it's, you know, it really puts me out there. I've really not done it. And um, we're going to process through it. And so I decided I've always wanted to make a safety pin. What's the point? You can buy one, right? It's just for fun. Why not? And so anyway, I thought, I looked at this and I went, you know what? Come on. It's a simple wire and it's a simple piece of sheet metal, right? Okay. And I went, okay, we can just totally jump into this and do this live. It's not a big deal until, of course, every time I do this, I wake up in the morning and I totally panic and I go, maybe I should give this a test run before I go live. Well, I sort of did a test run to this morning and I sort of got here. You can see the shape a little bit, but I didn't quite get it all the way. So we're going to process through and see if we can figure out how to make a safety pin. Of course, your, your input and your questions are always welcome. 
So do put them out there. Andy is with me today, as he always is when we go live. And he's reading all the chats because I can't read the chats while I'm working and have a torch in my hand. That's never safe. And he's just relaying it in my ear. Yep, got a headset in here. So he's talking to me as I hear him talking to Titus, too, upstairs. So I posted what I assume were the list of tools that you will need for this project. There may be more here and there or less, whatever, um, but they are listed in the description of these videos. So you can find those there or follow along and I'll go through all of that. Um, all these tools can also be found at theurbanbeater.com if you need anything. And it's a way to support us and what we're doing here and keep and so that we can keep this going. Don't know how much longer we're gonna go. People keep asking me, and it has been asked once again, how long are you gonna do this? I don't know, until I get tired. And I'm, I am starting to wear out, and it is starting to get tiring. I did pass my goal of 100 weeks, so there we are. Okay, so let's jump in. What did I find out? I was going to do with sil this with silver and decided, oh, maybe that's being a little bit ambitious. So I have here a piece of copper. Um, it's 24 gauge copper that I decided was too thick. So I rolled it out and it should be about 26 gauge. And then I also have some uh, 16 gauge wire for the, the pin part, I guess you could say. So we'll see. Happy what? Oh, thanks for the happy birthday to Titus. Appreciate it. Oh, happy birthday to Marcy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can't hear Andy. Happy birthday, Marcy. Sorry. Hope you have a good one. It's a hot week for it. <laughs> anyway, all right. So we've got some copper, um, copper sheet metal here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and anneal the entire sheet. I know I'm not going to need all of it, but I get a feeling that we're going to have to do this more than once to actually get it there. I've already done it once this morning. I think I understand it. We'll see. So because there's going to be a lot of bending and forging of this, I don't know what you call the parts of a safety pin, but we'll call it the head. Um, I'm going ahead and annealing this, especially because I had to roll it out. You know, when you roll out metal, you do need to anneal, anneal, anneal. The rule is if you've rolled it three times, you can only roll it three times before you have to anneal again. Because what happens is if you keep rolling it, you're going to crack the metal. So make sure that you roll it nicely, okay? I'm oh, sorry, that you anneal it nicely. Okay, that said. Just cut a piece out. So, and basically I have figured out already that the length of this piece will be double one half of this, or you know, it has to be the entire thing. So if you think about it, this is going to be about this big. So if you want it smaller, you're gonna cut this piece smaller. So you gotta think about um, how big you want this piece. Actually, I'm gonna make it a little smaller. And you want this stuff symmetrical. So we'll cut that out a little bit more symmetrical. And if you look at a safety pin, I decided, to, you know, I was doing this from memory this morning when I was just sort of testing it out. And then I decided maybe I should go get a safety pin and take a look and see what it looks like. And I realized, I thought that the shape was symmetrical on both sides, but it's not. So you have this sort of a V shape in here and then it comes around to this U and it's not sticking out as much here for the catch, you see that? And then I also noticed that the shape up here is more pinched on this side and it's more open on this side, of course, so that you can have a place to move the pin into, okay? So I am just going to, I'm gonna freehand this first and then figure it out from there, right? So here, we're just going to make sort of like this, I don't know, V shape, and come in towards the middle and round it back out, just like that, okay? And same thing on this side. And round it back out. There it is, can you see that? It's not gonna be perfect, but this is why we're doing it copper, because we're testing it out. Okay. 
and I'm just using a pair of shears. Of course, if you can't cut it with a pair of shears, then you'll want to pull out your saw and cut it. But this is so thin, and this is just a practice run anyway. Okay, I'm gonna round this out up here too, just because I can. And see how far I get. And I try to do this similar to the other side. Now, if I was doing this truly for real, I would draw this out on the computer. And then I, I would draw one side out and duplicate it, copy and paste it to the other side is how I would do it, just to ensure that I have symmetry. Okay, So you can see what that sort of looks like here. So we're just trying to make the shape the same on both sides. I think, so I'll end up, I'm guessing that I'll end up doing this more than once in this next hour once I figured this out. And part of my goal here with the Keep It, I Start Something New is to help you understand the process, you know, of what you have to think through when you're doing something new, right? That's part of learning. Okay. Again, I'm just trimming and making this as similar as possible. Okay. 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 So then I also decide, well, how are they making this round shape? And for me, the only way I can get to that round shape is to put it into a dap. So we're just going to put this in here and dab this down. And you know, what's interesting is it sort of cups and it reminds me a bit of the um, of Jingle Bells. Didn't we do the Jingle Bells this past Christmas, winter? So. Captain Obvious has struck again, and she says, maybe I should trace what I have so I know how to fix it. You know what? <laughs> I thought of that. It's funny, because I was thinking about that. I was always doing this going, hmm, I didn't make a template for myself, and I should have done that. We'll do it on the next round. Because again, let's just test it out and see. By the way, uh, we, we, we call Captain Obvious with the most affection. So don't think we're being... Don't, don't think that we are being uh, pejorative here. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm dapping this, trying to make this round. You can start, it's starting to come already. So this is sort of cool. And I'm using a small, a fairly small dap on a large well. Just trying to get it in there and get the shape really nice and formed. And I think what I'll do too, once I'm done with this part, I'm going to go ahead and um, anneal it one more time. So every time you start hammering on your metal, it hardens it. Every single blow hardens it. So you do want to be mindful and figure out how much, how hard you've gotten it. So by annealing it, it'll, it really just saves you. Why not? Why suffer, right? It's always a question. I need a new mesh. I know. Don't say anything. I was noticing that this morning. I've been busy. Okay. <laughs> yes, I'm using a Fred's hammer on a steel tab. No, bad girl, bad girl. 
It was just a quick blow. It wasn't really hard. See, no damage. We're good. Okay. And did you see it? It sort of collapsed on itself because it was a kneel, but that's fine. Okay, let's see. Bring this around. Bring this around. We're getting there. So we'll pull this out. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze it in. Let's see. So this was the rounded side. This was this was the more V side. And that one's a bit more pinched. So we're going to go ahead and grab a flat nose, a chain nose. Let's see if I can find one. Where did it go, nose? Oh, boy. You know, I have this whole spinner thing of tools over here, and you think that it would just be right here. So I'm just going to squeeze it down, like so, like they have it, and see where that goes. Okay. Just making some minor adjustments. Okay, so that side actually looks fairly pretty good. It's this here that doesn't seem to be coming around. And I'm wondering if I just tap on it, it'll come over. I'm going to go to a smaller hammer. So it's warping. You can see that. Let's see if I can fix it. Um, I'm going to grab a smaller dab. Let's bring the whole thing over. Again, all this is an experiment and some assumptions of how things and how metal should move. Okay. I'm just gonna stretch it out, back out, because I can't seem to get this in here. Let's see if I can get that there. Aha, you see that? It did, it did help. one other tool here. I'm thinking of like a little tiny stake of sorts to, to put this in here and to keep it in the, the well because it's puckering. Let me see if I can find my other tool here. So I'm thinking like of a blunt and ah, uh, here we go like something like this to put right here and see if I can push it down and still have this rounded side to keep it going. Let's see if that works. I don't think so. It's not wanting to stay here. It's not wanting to stay where I want it to be. Nope. Let's try it this way. Huh? Say that again for me, please. Okay. So the question is, couldn't I use a small dab on the top part here like I do a grommet? I did. I think you missed that. But
Okay, so another suggestion was, um, so Andy's reading my, your comments to me. So another suggestion was to go ahead and put a wire through here to create stability for this before bending it over. It's not, that's not a bad idea. Let's do that on the second round. Let's see what happens here. But annealing this seems to be helping. Okay, so there we are. So what I was trying to do is I was trying to get these ends down, right? So we're gonna go ahead and again, put a small teeny weeny little dab in here and see if we can push it down. So the problem was really that it was puckering on me. Yep, there it is. Can you see that? So it's starting, it's starting to come in. That's the shape I was looking for, trying to get to not pucker. And I'm pretty sure that the lack of annealing was problematic. So I always say, kneel's your friend, anneal, anneal, anneal. Hold on. Grab my round nose because I clearly am pushing too hard. Okay. Andy says I'm starting to fade when I talk because I'm concentrating. So I'm going to open that up. I don't know if you saw that, but I just opened that up a little bit right there. Yeah, okay, look at that. There's my safety pin head. Clearly the wire part is easy. It's about this part that's hard, right? So. Not perfect, but we'll do it again and see how far we get. Look at that. So I have a little bit of puckering here. I'm sure that if I annealed it and give a little bit of hammering. By the way, who came up with this anyway? <laughs> who came up with a safety pin design? That's what I want to know. They're sort of smart. Okay. And then what I would do is, of course, make the pin, solder it in, wind it, and there's the other side. But let's do another one and see where that goes. All right. So we'll do this one. It would be better. That's, that's the goal. Let's make it better. All right, let's give some dimensions as we go. Let's grab a ruler. And see what we decided. So this came out to be about a half an inch. This should be about an inch. It's just inch and an eighth. So apparently Walter Hunt, thank you for that Char, did this in 1889. But the real question is, how did he come up with it? That's always my question. All right, so let's do this one more time. And we'll try to do this in a way that, so something I did, did figure out when, um, after the first one, was that this area here, the middle area, needs to be about half the width of the outside area. That I did figure out ahead of time. Okay, so this time, yeah. 
So this time, sorry about my head there, I'm going to go ahead and saw this. It should be a little bit better, right? So let's switch out for a second. Do I even have my saw around? I do. Try to do this professionally. We'll see. Okay, my sound back? Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't I don't know what happened, but it seemed to have lost connection. So, let's go back. Okay, so I sawed the U out, and I'm gonna go ahead and finish the other cut with my um with my shears because it's a little bit easier especially for a piece this thin. Like so. So basically I'm making like little hammer head shapes, I guess you could say. Yep, there's that. So, okay, so then on this side, I'm gonna make this a little bit more severe and not as round as the other one. 
Again, just mimicking what I see as my as my sample here. And uh, so thanks for hanging in there with the audio. Don't know what happened. Just a little glitch. It decided it was tired and doesn't want to work anymore. I suppose you could say. Fibulous. Hmm. I know the word. I don't have a visual in my little brain. <laughs> okay, so then now that we have that, we're going to put it back in here and dap it because that seemed to have worked before. Okay, I'll play nice this time. I'm going to take out my mallet to do this instead of using my frets hammers. So we're going to dap it really well. Okay. We'll move to another size down. Let's get this really in there. Oops. That's not much smaller. Let's go even smaller. It's not small either. What the heck? Q, where are your depths? Okay, so now I'm going to force this in on the, um, you know what, let me, let me pickle this real quick. I'm finding that it's probably hard to see. And of course my pickle pot, for some reason, is not on. Hmm. I think I lost power or something. Because I know I turned on my pickle pot a half hour ago, but it, for some reason, is not on. Let me throw that pickle for just a minute. So what we're doing is we're dapping it just to bring it around to create that top part, right? And then we're going to chase it down with a chasing hammer and to bring the fold over. Again, seemed to have worked the first time. The key here is to anneal it along to keep, to keep the metal from puckering to get it to move the way you want it to move. So anytime metal starts fighting you, you want to anneal it. It's not a hard process, so I don't know why people are resistant to annealing their metal when they're working, but I find that it's really more about laziness than anything. Um, so don't be lazy, you know, like me. <laughs> when it comes to this stuff, I, I do have a tendency to be a little bit lazier. I don't know why. Okay. Pickle's cold, so it sort of worked. Didn't work all the way. That's okay. Just want it to change the color a little bit so you can see better what I'm doing. All right. So I'm using a smaller dap, and I'm really forcing this down. Like so into that well. Now switch sides and do all of the areas. Like so. And keep cupping it in. Do the same thing here. And see how I'm holding it on the side and I'm cupping in those, we'll call it the hammer ends, right? One more time in the middle, and then I'm going to kneel it again. Okay, looking good. Again. So the nice thing about this too is it's copper, right? So it's a lot easier to work with. 
Not sure I'm ready to jump into silver. <laughs> yeah, we're being a little cheap about it. It is what it is. Okay. So here we go. Take out the, I'm gonna do it with the round pliers. Put it here. and bend it over like so. I'm gonna straighten this out, it's a little too curved. I guess I did not need to do both sides. Just do it right there. Okay, so it's wanting to pucker right here, you can see it, right? So instead of continuing to press down on it, which will force that pucker, I'm gonna go ahead and um, see if I can chase it down a little bit before I bend it over. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and chase this side too. I'm at it. There it is. do that one more time with the annealing because as soon as it gets hard you just want to go ahead and anneal it. And again, the puckering, I'm gonna stick it back into here and see if I can get that to dap out. Get that to shape for me. Yes, I know, I know. Fret's hammer, fret's hammer, got it. Okay, so, so that helped make that shape there. Again, you gotta look at your metal and see what is it, what is it asking for? Sometimes it's just asking for a little help. Let's move it out here to the next one. Sort of helpful. Okay, not wanting to bend over, so I'm just gonna help it. Ask it to come around, there we go. Okay, I'm using my pliers, but I'm being really, really gentle not to all of a sudden squash it, right? And I'm bending the U as I'm holding the sides in place. Again, I'm holding it where it wants to pucker to keep it from puckering. I'm really liking that word today. Maybe that's the, that's the drinking game for today. Pucker. Okay. I'm gonna 
open this guy back up right here. Tuck this in between like that. I need a pair of thinner chain nose. So I got one side pretty pretty. I mean, it's sort of pretty. The other side a little bit more challenging. Okay. So I did not do this evenly. So this side's hanging this side's hanging down from this side. But it's a look. It's a look. Okay. So I'm gonna try it one more time. Doing it the way that who suggested this, babe? However, someone else suggested. Someone out there suggested we put a wire in here, solder it down, and then bend it and see what happens. Okay. Try it again. This time we'll do this again with a. Um, we'll do it again with the shears and see what happens. Yep, I'm still here. I'm more. <laughs> I'm concentrating. Andy was verifying if I was still here, and I was like, "Do we still have sound?" Yes, we still have sound. All right, making a smaller one. Clearly. So we're just gonna. Make the shape one more time. Again, it's sort of like a dumbbell of sorts, right? By the way, for those of you who are registered for any of my BeatFest classes, I have sent out an email so that you can pay for your kits online. That would be most helpful if you could do that before the class. So if you did not get my email, please do reach out to me. I don't know why I can't cut this. I'm all of a sudden struggling to cut this. Arg. Don't forget, VEC is officially open. Virtually Ever Crafting is officially open for registration. So if you haven't registered for that yet, there is a coupon on the homepage of the virtuallyevercrafting.com site. So take advantage of that if you are signing up for a full day, half day class for Wednesday. We'll go ahead and disc it's the coupon doesn't work for those days, but um, we will be, if you register before the deadline, we will go ahead and credit back it, the $8 discount, okay? So for the, um, for the pin part, it should be really easy. So I'm just going to take my multi-looping plier and I'm going to create the bottom of that pin. Actually, that's a little small for me. And I'm just wrapping it around. You could do this on it. You can do this on a round nose plier too, of course, but we like our multi-looping plier. Okay. This end will trim later and file, but I'm more interested in what we're going to do on this end. Actually, I'm gonna leave it straight to go with the suggestion of maybe soldering down a piece of wire and then um, using that to bend it. So I'm guesstimating eh, about that long, right? Hopefully I have enough, but I can always trim it back. Okay, 
So we'll go ahead and pull that other piece out of the pickle. Tiny little piece fighting maybe in the pickle pot. So we'll go ahead and flatten that a little bit. And so it was suggested that we, um, it was suggested that we solder this down and use that to fold it. Let's see if that works. Now, of course, I don't think I want this to come all the way through because we need a little space for the pin to go into. So I'm gonna solder this slightly off like so. Make sure it's nice and flat. Find the solder board. Okay, I gotta clear a little space here. And put down some copper solder. Not a ton, just a little bit. I'm gonna just place it in two spots on my wire, like so. Whoops. And again, I'm gonna pull it off a little bit. My wire's not exactly straight. I'm just gonna push it down when I go to do this. You do want the wire to be flat to your metal if you want this to solder because remember when you're soldering you have to have the pieces touching. Just using a little bit of copper solder paste. There you go. And again I'm just going to push it down and help it stay in place because I did not take much care to ensure that it was flat. Being lazy. We're experimenting. Let's see if this works. So I have a tendency to skip little steps like that to, for perfection when I'm just testing, right? Okay, well that's it. <laughs> Do you see the problem here? It has to be turned this way. Thank goodness it's copper wire and I can just turn it this way. And we're going to, oh, I made this too. <laughs> Oops. I made this too long. We can adjust it later. We're gonna pretend like this actually was right. Okay. All right, so this time what we're gonna do is, what are we gonna do? Let's bend it over. All right. And looking at the metal, I'm just assessing what it wants to do and how to get there. And although I could sit here and just bend it, I, I'm thinking that it would be a little bit more elegant, we'll say, to use a chasing hammer to bring it around. Okay, so again, already puckering for some reason. So now I'm just going to help it and say, no, I want you to go that way and that way. All right. We'll put this in here. Are you going to bend for me? Yes. Okay, so again, same issue. It's wanting to pucker in the same areas, so we just move it. bending a tube but I guess in essence I am sort of bending a tube okay so I started with the bigger one and I'm gently slowly but surely going down to a smaller size as I'm going oh I think we're on to something okay Again, it's puckering. So we're just gonna help it down. 
Susan, I think you got it. Hmm. See, isn't this great? <laughs> Crowdsourcing. I love it. I think that's what they call this, right? This is a community effort. Okay, so you can see there that part. I'm just going to pinch it down the way they have it. I'm going to put this right back in here. Oof. It's gotten really hard. So I'm going to anneal it one more time. And you're not going to anneal the whole thing because I'm going to re-bend this wire. See, and sometimes, you know, you just sort of overthink things. Sometimes there's better ways of doing it, but because you can't get out of your own head, you do things the hard way. See, it's coming around. And actually, if you had one of these, you can get this on the Urban Beer home site, then you won't be marring on the outside. I realized that my pin part is too short because I miscalculated where I was soldering this. We're going to fix this here in a second. We know that. Okay. So, yeah. Seems to have worked just fine. But we want this to come in really nice and close so that the pin doesn't fall out, right? Then bring that in a bit closer. Oh, I need to open this up a little tiny bit. That's, that's how the pin will be able to slip inside, like so. Okay, so we'll do this again. Let's straighten that out. I'm using my nylon nose pliers. You know, what's funny is I don't really normally use my nylon nose pliers to straighten wire, although that was what the original intention was for these. I used it for many other things, but hey, you can straighten out your wire. All right, so let's do this again. Right in here. Make it the smaller one this time. Okay, maybe not. Maybe I do like the bigger one still. I need you to read that to me again. So there's another question. Um, Andy's reading it to me, not understanding it, so I'm going to ask him to read that to me again. Ah, uh, so a suggestion was, could you make a loop here so, we, so that you could hang this and hang like something off of it? Sure, why not? That would work. That's fun. Okay, so my wire is too thick to come through this area. So you'll have to open this up. Just a bit more so that the wire can actually make it through. <gasps> Look at 
fucking bad. Okay, so a couple issues here. I make this not wide enough or more narrow than my loops. It looks a little funky. It's rudimentary, right? Um, so definitely that has to change. And let's see, play the around with this. To polish this, I probably throw this into a tumbler would be helpful. Would make life a lot easier. But I'm thinking, what if I just open this up a little bit? Wow, it's so work hardened. Okay. It, it is quite work hardened. So. Alright, so what do you guys think? A safety pin. Who knew, huh? So this would be, I think, this would be a lot of fun in sterling silver to have a safety pin in sterling silver. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I'm going to go back to the drawing board. I've learned a lot. I don't know if you've learned anything, but I know I've learned a few things today. And I'm going to look at making a real pattern. And then we'll come back next week on Monday and try it again in silver. And then I'll show you how to how to file that in and how to make this. I, I, I think that that was a really great idea. There's a few shortcomings of how we did that. Um, but I think, again, we have an answer. See, I'm looking in here. They did not do that here, but hey, does it matter? It doesn't matter to me. I'm meaning they didn't use the wire, or did they? They sort of did. They sort of, the wire does come up to here. They didn't use the wire to bend this piece, but any more of these pieces are done mechanically, so it's inside of a form, so it's a heck of a lot easier than what we're doing. But none of us are buying one of those, right? Um, but anyway, so I'll come back next week. I'll post instructions on these for download with a pattern, I'm thinking is what I will do to, um, to make this great. But what a fun little project. I'm so happy. I made the safety pin. Okay. So that said, thanks for the input. Thanks for hanging out and um, the inspiration. Really appreciate it. That's so cool. Okay. So one other question. What tool am I bending that around? This is a nylon nose with a round I'm sorry, with a round nose um, combo tool. It is on our website. Um, Andy will post, can post that in the comments there. So do look for that. Uh, I'm sure he's doing it now, right? <laughs> He'll work on getting that in the comments. So anyway, so next week, next Monday, we'll come back and we will do this in sterling silver. And, um, and I will post a pattern for sure for this head to make this great. All right, what's going on on Wednesday? We'll be back with uh, Keep It Simple with another project. And this week's Zoom is going to actually be on Sunday, not on Friday. So if you're registered for I'm Hooked, it's going to be on Sunday afternoon. If you haven't registered for that class yet, you still can um, get the Zoom. I think all the kits are sold out at this point. So only the Zoom is available, but you can definitely join us for that. Anything else coming up? soon uh august is almost here i'll post that schedule probably end of the week hopefully by end of the week if not next week i know lots and lots of things going on preparing for beat fest preparing for virtually ever crafting oh big news big big news virtually ever crafting we are doing our first hybrid and we are collaborating with tuscora lapidary society they have chosen i don't know five classes six classes to have hybrid at their studio. So if you are anywhere near Brookhaven, Pennsylvania and would prefer to work in studio instead of in your home, you can join them. I will be posting those hybrids on Virtually Ever Crafting in this next week as we finalize all the contracts with the um, instructors and with Tuscarora. But that's really, really exciting news here so that you don't have to work at home. You can work in a studio. All right, so until I see you again on Wednesday, thanks for hanging out again. Thanks for your input. This is fabulous. So excited. Have a great week. We will see you later. Bye.